Welcome. This is Money Heart, where we explore the emotional side of money. I'm Camille Diaz, and today we're discussing working in your gifts. My guest is Amy Campbell. She's the owner and director of All That Happens at the Red Checker and principal writer at MyResumeLady.com. Amy, welcome to Money Heart. It's nice to be here, Camille. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to have you. Uh, let us in on what you were doing before you became an entrepreneur. Um, I had a, a corporate job in the reliability maintenance field, and it was a marketing position. And um, I was a single mother. I'm still a single mother, but I was a single mother then of a, of a four-year-old. Uh, and my life was really busy and very full. Uh, it was just not making enough money at the time. And uh, I saw a lot of potential for the role that I was in and loved the company, believed everything that we did was uh, solid gold. And we, you know, when I, when I worked there, I really loved all the people and mm -hmm. just really good things um, were going on in my life. It was just, um, you know, the money was tight. Just sure. um, mom stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Being a single mom is hard and a four-year-old, you know, you can't exactly leave them at home by yourself and go by themselves and go off to work or do whatever you need to do. It's a big deal. Right. Yeah. So when did you first launch your side hustle? Um, so my side hustle got started in 2008, September, mm -hmm. I think it was. And uh, that was just a result of a phone call I had with a money guru, I guess. And uh, his name is Dave Ramsey. Some, some of your listeners might know who that is. Some guy. Yeah. I've heard of him. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> so I reached out because I was, um, I was frustrated that I wasn't making um, more money mm -hmm. in my job, at, at, in my role, in my, at my corporate job. And um, was just kind of seeking a, maybe a little bit of guidance or some wisdom on like how I should ask for a raise maybe, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, what I should do about, you know, what I should do about my situation. Should I be budgeting even more than I was already budgeting? Yeah. And, uh, he, he said, well, maybe you could get a second job. And I said, well, you know, I, I work a lot and I get home kind of late and my daughter goes to bed by like eight 30. So I barely get to see her at all anyway, right now. And I don't know how I can make that work. And uh, he said, well, have you considered, you know, uh, switching jobs? And I said, well, I really like the company I'm with. <laughs> and I, I see so much potential here and I uh, really love, you know, like the people and the work we do. And, you know, I went on to that whole thing. And he said, well, you know, I've hit you with two different things and you don't have any, you know, have nothing but no for me. He said, what do you, he said, well, I'm going to ask my last question. And he said, what, uh, what do you do really well that you might be able to do from home? And I said, well, I write a hell of a resume. And he said, oh, well, you know, you could do that in your weekends and, uh, and evenings as, you know, as long as it didn't in interfere with your current work, I'm sure that, you know, your employer would probably be fine with that. And I, he said, you know, you can make some good money that way. Um, and I gave it some consideration and I thought this is something that, that sounds feasible. So, you know, I, I, I have to credit that phone call to the, the idea, I don't know if I would have gotten there by myself. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd written resumes for years for other people and uh, never charged them anything, you know, fam fam family and friends. Sure. Um, but it was definitely something that was in my gift and my, my wordsmithing, my ability there, uh, mm -hmm. the, the gift that I have to, to write, maybe not <laughs> the best interviewee you've ever had, <laughs> but if you put it in writing, you know, when we put it in writing, I've got your back. So um, those are the sort of things that um, brought me to entrepreneurship for the first time. And I didn't really think about it like I was starting a business necessarily mm. at the time though. And uh, the, the local chamber of commerce, the, the Charleston, I was living in Charleston, South Carolina at the time. And um, the, the local chamber of commerce came in and they mentioned that they had a, a Kaufman foundation course called fast track new venture entrepreneur. And she invited me to come to take the class. And she said, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, 10 weeks and it's um, like, I think she said it was like a hundred dollars or something like that. So $10 a class or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then I had to get a sitter 
because I can't take my sure with me to the so store. now it's fifty dollars a class. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like yes, exactly. It cost me you know hundreds of dollars to take the class, but I made um, some very long long term relationships and network mm-hmm. there, friendships and uh, people that I still speak with today, and um, the class proved to me some things that I didn't know about myself. They were revealing, you know, deficits that I had in, in the, in the concept of right of um, starting a business, things I don't enjoy doing or not, not naturally within my gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be taxing or really still my joy from starting a business. And as I looked at whether or not I would want to be a full-time resume writer, it didn't look real promising. So I <laughs> So I stayed in my, um, I stayed in my corporate job and continued yeah. to do the work there. And right. I think that, that was a really good point that you made about not every part of starting a business is fun. Mm-mm. And a lot of times when we have something we're super passionate about or really good at, and, and we're totally gifted at that one thing, we're like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. And until you've really looked at the whole process, okay, what is it really going to take for me to do this? How much money do I have to put in? How much time do I have to devote to it? What kind of marketing? Oh yeah, there's probably going to be bookkeeping or some kind of legal stuff that I got to deal with. There's a lot. There's a lot to think about rather than just getting hung up on the dream of I'm going to do my thing and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. fortunately there's people out there that can help with this part. That's not so fun. And you can, yeah. you get to the point where you just hire out the stuff you hate. So yeah. That's okay. Okay. Well, so I, I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed the idea of it, but mm-hmm. the practical aspect of it, it seemed, um, improbable as a single mother that, right. that that didn't seem very responsible for me to, to put that much at risk in the moment. Sure. And um, I had this great job until I didn't. And that was. <laughs> so what awkward. happened with the great job? <laughs> oh, well, um, we're rocking and rolling along and. They came in on a Friday and um, asked me to to uh, join them in the conference room, which was rare because, you know, there were a lot of men I worked with and and I not a lot of women. And so wasn't invited to the table very often. Mm. And um, so whenever I went in, I realized uh, that it was just a small group. Um, and they said, we're going to we decided that we're going to go in a different direction. And I was like, great. Where are we going? Because that's who I am. <laughs> That sounds fabulous. So excited. Yeah. Let's do it. What are we doing? Yeah. Well, we're going to go in a different direction. Oh, great. Well, where are we going? And they were like, it kind of means without you, Campbell. And I, you know, still, still being the person that I am was like, what do you mean? You know, you're, I'm, you're letting me go. I said, do you have any idea the size of the projects and the things that I have going on here? And um, the really ambitious projects, and um, they were just really sure that they were ready to to try to farm it out to other people, and um, that we were going to separate our relationship. And it was, it was very challenging. It was a very very challenging time. Uh, in that moment for me, I was still all about the company. Like, do you need me to stay and help transition my files, my work, to mm-hmm. someone so that they can carry it on through for you know to to completion so mm. that it would you know be successful and um I'm not sure if I had it to do over I would have that same mentality not because mm. I've changed but because that was um that was pearls before swine I don't think that they would have appreciated if I had had you know um that uh, they didn't appreciate that attitude then I don't know why anyone would appreciate you know that now it's that's rare to find an employer who who's as loyal to you as you are, you know, I think to, to them, that's difficult. Yeah. At and that's really interesting. You know, you were, you were really loyal to this company mm-hmm. and really cared about their mission and what they were working towards and all of that. And yeah. you didn't even have a clue no. that no. they were going to toss you out the door. Like yeah. not, no, no signals, no signs, no nothing. No, I probably should have guessed they had, um they had hired one of the co-founders sons and, and he had, uh, a role just above mine. And I think mm-hmm. that as I was point person for many things, even things outside my role, uh, I think that he didn't appreciate that very much. And, and that's, um, I think that that's one of the things that has created that specific scenario created a lot of empathy in me for mm-hmm. other people when they've come to me for like resume work and said, um, yeah. you know, I was let go because I've never been let go from anything. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I was always been, I've always been um, recruited away from my jobs or um, people have created positions for me in their organizations. And so, you know, I've always, ha- it's always been kind of golden for me, my path, mm-hmm. but then this happened and I realized that maybe I was short-sighted um, when dealing with people who said to me, uh, I was let go. And when I asked why they said it was a personality conflict or it was, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly why it was not, a, not my fault or I wasn't at fault or whatever. I, I think it created in me clarity and a definitely empathy for mm-hmm. others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. That once you've been through it now, as you're writing these resumes for people who are looking for a new job, you really feel like, okay, I understand, you know, you didn't, you maybe didn't do anything wrong, not a bad person. Somebody somewhere in the company just made a decision to do something differently. And right. yeah, yeah. yeah something changed. And so, they were going to go ahead, but it, it meant something without changed. you, Campbell. <laughs> yeah. It meant without you. That's right. So what was, um, I, I love the story that you told me. What was the reaction when you told your family? What, ha- what happened when you called your mom and said, hey, that's, oh. that's my job. So uh, I was on my way home and uh, driving in the car. I hadn't bought, it was pretty new. And um, I would think I was a little bit shocked, but I wasn't emotional. I was just numb. I didn't really Mm -hmm. understand. You know, um, it's very difficult. It's a very difficult thing to be the, to, to be experiencing. And I had moved my, my daughter and myself, we'd moved um, from Oklahoma to Charleston, South Carolina. And then, you know, there I was with, you know, no, not a real support system and right. uh, yeah, no backup, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I called my mom and I said, I was just um, released from service uh, with Allied. And she said, Hmm, well, you're going to need to get married in the next two weeks. <laughs> I said, I'm not even dating anyone. Like, how's oh this? God. Like, how's this a solution? This is your go-to solution? <laughs> like, I don't understand this at all. And, um, um, you know, I think she might have been trying to make me laugh, but in my heart of hearts, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the you one it, I right? called for advice. Yeah, I was laughing. I called you, know, you for support like, and your best <laughs> answer is to tell me to go find someone else to support yes. me? Yes. And so um, I think what, what frustrates me when I think about that moment is that um, I was so shell shocked and she was saying, um, you can't, you can't fix it. You can't, you know, you can't fix it for yourself. And I, um, and she, when she asked me, she said, well, what are you going to do? I, I said, well, you know, I, I think it was 18 months preceding that, that I had um, started actually had launched the, uh, my resume lady. And, uh, every time I sold a resume, I did something with the money. So the first resume, I think I, I bought a logo, uh, or had the logo developed. And then I bought the URL and I had someone put up a landing page and I, um, then I bought business cards and, um, I opened a bank account for it. And, you know, just, um, as I went along over 18 months, what I was essentially doing was building a business, but I really didn't know it because it was something that was happening just so slowly that it wasn't, Mm -hmm. you know, I I didn't identify it like Mm -hmm. uh, as though I was building with purpose um, a business that was going to save me somehow. And, um, and then when my mom asked the question, you know, what are you, what what are your plans? And I said, I think I'm going to go to work for myself on Monday morning and she said, what are you talking about? That's, you know, kind of like you're crazy. Uh-huh. And um, she, you know, I, I explained that I had five resumes that were just waiting. And these are people who were not in a hurry, um, but had prepaid and the money was sitting in PayPal and they were waiting for the resumes. And, and when I wrote the resumes, I could release the money to my bank account. So of uh-huh. course I was motivated to yeah. get that going. And, um, so, you know, I got up on Monday morning, I grieved, I had, I, I, I was really sad. I, uh, I really enjoyed that. And Invi- I enjoyed the environment I was in mm-hmm. and I really loved the people and the staff and 
Um, mm. I liked being part of something that was yeah. bigger than me. So, you know, yeah. I understand why people sometimes don't leave their corporate jobs to, to pursue a gift or a dream um, mm-hmm. because there's a safety in, in that and being there. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I, and I really enjoyed, you know, my time, time there. Um, so I spent the weekend, you know, just kind of feeling blue, questioning, you know, had I done the best work I could do always and mm-hmm. had I, you know, what had, what had transpired, what really happened and right. what was my part in that? Because that's, you know, being honest with yourself is the first stop. And um, so then I, then on Monday morning, I, uh, I got up and I, got my daughter around for school and I put her on the bus by now she's you know she's turned five so she's starting kindergarten oh she takes the bus and she's a girl and I put her on the bus and I and I get ready for my day and I have done that every day since and that's September of 2008 I don't work for my my pajamas and I shower every day whether I think I need one or not and I do my hair and I put on my face and I I get prepared mentally to go to work and that, that, that structure, that, um, that discipline, Mm -hmm. it actually helps me. So, you know, I don't know if it would help any of your listeners, but just to, to keep a schedule and not to, you know, when people say, Oh, you work for yourself, you must have a lot of flexibility. I laugh and say, sure. I have flexibility to work from (laughs) anywhere I am as long as I have Wi-Fi." Right. Uh, because that's really what it amounts to is the flexibility to be working from the parking lot while my daughter's in dance Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, or, you know, while I'm sitting at the airport waiting, I'm not sitting, you know, twiddling my thumbs. I'm, I'm actually working. And so, um, you know, have I been able to wrap some travel in there? I have, I've worked from Ireland for a week. I've worked from Berlin and France. Uh, I went to Paris, um, in 2018 and I was there for three or four days and I was able to work from, you know, from there while it was a leisure trip. It was also, you know, um, work. I had some work I could get accomplished. So knowing that I have a lifestyle that allows me to, to be flexible in that way, to say yes to things that either were otherwise I would have to say no to. Mm-hmm. Those are, those are important to me. I love the, I I want to go back to the part about your mom, because Mm -hmm. I think that's not an uncommon reaction, not necessarily telling someone they've got to go get married to to survive, but of, of your close friends and family, not really loving the change in status quo. Yeah. Oh, you've always had a job Mm -hmm. and you did really well at that. Oh, you want to start your own thing? Well, no, I don't, that's not a good idea. I feel like a lot of people hear that when they, when they get ready to start their own business or make their side business, their main gig. Yeah. Yeah. You really have to surround yourself with people who are doing things like you. And what we want is for our safe group, like our family and our close friends to, Mm -hmm. to cheer for us. Um, But if they've never done it, then they won't understand it. And that's not the it's not going to be what it's not going to turn out the way you envisioned. They don't have a script. They don't know how to cheer for you, but yeah. they are right. So, um, so, so, you know, use a lot of, you know, grace with them because they don't, they don't know what they, they should be doing or help to, to, that would help you, you know? Right. Um, right. And, uh, but when you, when you do find your group of people, um, I think, being part of a mastermind where Mm -hmm. maybe it's not a leads group, maybe a leads group feels too, uh, too formal when you, maybe you don't feel you have the network yet to Mm -hmm. be able to serve other people at the, at the highest level that you might to later might be able to later. So maybe don't start there, but start with a mastermind where, uh, various people of varying disciplines, uh, obviously with totally life, totally different life experiences, um, different gifts or, or, or skills, um, they come at your problems with you, right, um, with a fresh set of eyes or with ex- their own experiences and help you navigate some situations that when you're relying only on your own mind, your own experiences, your own you know, skill set, you might find limitations um, or barriers and those other people can help you to break, break through some of those. And sometimes they'll, they'll even just help you. you they know? will. They will. And I, I've had that experience where we had someone come and say, you know what, I've got this person that just blasted me on social media. And I have no idea how to handle it or what to do. 
And so everyone at the table went around and said, well, I would probably approach it like this and do this. And here's, and by the end, we had this beautifully crafted response for her to use that, you know, made her seem um, knowledgeable and tough, but still empathetic with the person. And, and it just totally diffused the situation and calmed it right down. But when you're in it, Mm-hmm. It's hard to see that stuff. You just get so frustrated or, or whatever, because you're in it. And so you need those other people to tell you, okay, here's what I did when that happened to me. Here's what you might want to try. I love mastermind groups and that, yeah. that kind of peer group. Um, and if you can find one where everybody's in a different industry, then you never feel like you're, oh, I don't want to share my trade secrets, you know, with my competitor. So you, you get a group together where you're all doing something different. Well, so mastermind groups that I've been part of, even if I had crossed over with someone, the pie is so large and there's yeah, so much oh, yeah. we had out there we're, and we're not really ever talking so much about, um, and they're trust-based too, right? So, right. Uh, so I, I wouldn't work with someone I thought would steal my leads and I would never do the same, you know, do that for them, you know, to them either. So that's, you know, that's something to consider. But when you work in a, in a, uh, nationally or, or internationally and your mastermind mm-hmm. is you know, you know Connecticut to Utah you don't really have a problem if someone else is in the same role that you're no. in no. invariably we don't serve the same um the same industries or the same people and you know in my my instance I I didn't have that but I can see where I would have been just as encouraging and I probably would have been in the group going and so and so, don't you agree? Because then we would have been putting our minds together to kind of help someone gently go the the direction that that alone I was trying to to move someone, or they were trying, you know, the same to to move me in a direction. Right. Um, and so, you know, when they have more than one person, they can come at it from, you know, yes and, and that's yeah. very important. Yeah, yeah, it's super helpful. So, do you have any other tips for those who are either wanting to start something, you know, a side a side hustle that that involves their passion or what they love or somebody who's getting ready to make that leap from I've been kind of doing <laughs> this on the side and, and whether they're being pushed or they're going voluntarily, um, what else would you yeah. share? Well, I would say, um, I think you've touched on a, an important aspect. I think, uh, I think that there's a difference and a, a really big difference for me uh, between the, what are my gifts, like natural, you know, what, what I'm natural at. Mm-hmm. And um, things that are my passion, things that uh, that I do, the two roles that I that I have, and the two companies yeah. that I set up, they're they're really different. Um, they have some areas where they could overlap, and there's some natural um, and symbiotic, you know, mm-hmm. ways they can work together. But generally speaking, for the first, I don't know, three to five years, I think they were independent. Uh, entities, different bank accounts and different everythings, because in my mind, I couldn't see how these two things could relate um, as closely as I do now. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain uh, the, my resume lady, which was the first, the first company that I created was in September of 2008. And by March of 2010, whenever I went through the corporate separation, I, I thought, okay, I, let's see what this is about while I, while I look for other roles with other companies who may want yeah. to, to hire me. And by June, I had determined that there wasn't going to be one company that could bring me on and where I could be as fulfilled. Uh, but there were many companies that I could serve with my skills in my industry and peers that I had made relationships with, even competitors that I had good rapport with were, um, you know, asking me, could I do marketing work with them? And that was not going to fall very well under the, my resume lady. Like I couldn't yeah. reconcile my, I'm going to send them an invoice for marketing work, but from my resume lady, it kind sure. of limited what I could produce there. Yeah. So um, the red checker um, was formed in, I believe it was June of 10. Mm -hmm. And then those things ran, um, you know, parallel. I would segment my time where my evenings and weekends, again, went back to the resume writing and the bulk of my work were multi multiple client uh, accounts that Mm -hmm. I worked 
you know, with subcontractors to do various things, whether that would be graphics or IT or, or um, you know, salesforce.com um, enterprise setup or whatever it might be, right. that we were working together in this way. And all these years later, we're still working together. So those relationships oh, cool. have, have lasted this distance, but uh, of time. Yeah. Um, so build a, relationships. That's a, that's a yeah, huge Yeah, always co be collecting people. Um, my friend Sean Griffin says that, and he's a startup guru. And he says, uh, always be collecting people, always mm -hmm. be collecting people because um, they, they make you better. You know, they, they, right. they encourage you and they also challenge you and, um, and they, they help you grow. Yes. So, yes, they do. But there's a big difference. I'm just one of the really lucky, even blessed people who can say that I have work that I do, which is business to consumer work that is a gift. And no matter how hard I've tried to maybe like do less of it, I know that that gift that I have to help other people see what they've accomplished in the past, their experience, how the value of their experience um, and the expertise that they have, they've gained and the skills that they have uh, and their potential, that that is something I, I, I'm, I'm made to do that. It's important that I continue to do that to serve other people at, at you know, to do their best work as well. And sometimes it's part consulting, sometimes it's part counseling, but right. um, all the time it's showing them how amazing they are on paper. And in that way, I often say to my own detriment, sometimes I think uh, I'm not the best writer. I'm, I'm a good writer, but I'm not the best writer. If your story isn't there, uh, you don't have a story. It's going to be very hard for me to tell it on paper. Mm. And um, I find invariably everybody has a story. Yeah. Everybody has a story. They and do. So, they really but, do. But I write. So those one-to-ones that I gain from that, those relationships and the repeat um, business that I get from them, mm -hmm. the continual updates or the referrals, I, I really love and, and, uh, and appreciate those. The passion that I have, which I describe passion, it, it, you'll recognize if it's a passion or you're, you know, uh, for you, if you are envisioning that you're like a thoroughbred at the horse races, right? And the gate is closed and the crowd is roaring and you're just waiting, like you're almost prancing, waiting for them <laughs> to open that gate so that you can right. run this race. Because that's when you know that you're, you are in a passion project or you have a passion work and that passion work um, can incorporate your gifts. So obviously I do a, a fair amount of writing and, mm -hmm. um, and networking and things that I mentioned before that I um, utilize their relationship building, but it's different because as a sales driven marketer, my brain operates in ways that, um, you know, keep me excited about the chase. It's about, um, it's about the process of it yeah. as right. much as the win. So yeah. it's about as much of the running the, 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 the race running as it the is race. The winning the winning the race. Yes. And, and I like that. And so that's when you know that your passion is something that, um, that you need to pursue and it's okay to try to do it as a side hustle in the evenings and weekends, as long as, you know, it doesn't, and I'm going to put this caveat on it for other people because I haven't, this is out of retro, in retrospect for myself, I'll say, as long as it doesn't interfere with other aspects of your life that also require your attention. And as a mm -hmm. single mom, I've been present, but not always available. And there might be some things I would do differently if I could roll back time and just, just make other choices. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, I did, didn't have a, didn't have sight to see that um, beyond building, uh, uh, making a living. I wasn't doing much about making a life. I really enjoy work, mm -hmm. but I um, missed a couple of things along the way. Moments really not, you right. know, but missed moments that uh, I can't recapture. So learn from me and um, make sure that you, you know, you give to the people who are in your life first. And then um, I think your passion project will have more, it'll take on more joy for you. And there won't be any guilt when you go do it. Um, no one will make you feel badly for going and putting your attention to this thing. That's your passion. Mm -hmm. um, I think you'll find more support maybe then as well. Right, you know, right. It's hard to say, cause I don't know the dynamics of everyone's, you know, the in and out. Sure, so but I think that's a great, yeah. 
great, great point of making sure that you're not just making a living, you're still making a life. Mm -hmm. And when it, when we are doing something we truly love, it's very easy to get so wrapped up in it that you kind of forget about your family and your friends and free time for yourself and all that other kind of stuff. Cause you just love it. Self-care. Self-care. Yeah. 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 Huge. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just, you get all wrapped up and forget about that other stuff. So finding that kind of balance, or at least remembering to check in with the other side once in a while before you go back to the project, you know, poke your head up and and take, take a little look and go hang out with those people that care about you uh, and then come back. So yeah, Mm -hmm. I've fallen into that trap myself. So fully, (laughs) fully, fully understand that one. This has been so much fun, Amy. Thank you. I enjoyed it so much. Thank you for letting me touch on some things that I don't get an opportunity to do very often. It's been really nice. You're welcome. This has been great. Um, Amy can be reached through her website, theredchecker.com or on LinkedIn. And if you want to search for her there, it's linkedin.com slash I N slash A J H P C. Thank you as well to our listeners and viewers. I'm your host, Camille Diaz. This show is sponsored by Serenity Financial, a Five Rings financial agency specializing in financial education, living benefits, and guaranteed lifetime income. Be sure to follow Money Heart on social media at Money Heart Show and on our website, moneyheartshow.com. Today's money mantra is one that Amy provided, and it is do what you can with what you have until you can do what you want. Thanks so much.